okay guys so listen the moment is here welcome back to cj's kitchen hello everybody welcome again to cj's kitchen so a lot of persons been asking me about sorrel cake i don't know how to make sorrel cake but i have an idea and i am gonna try and see if this idea works out and the idea i have i'll show in here i just bought some um dried sorrel i bought the dry one because i really don't know how to do this thing so it's just an idea so in here i've gone ahead and i've washed the, the dry sorrel i've washed it and what i realized i don't know if they put um coloring on it but it came like when i washed it the color was washing off right so i'm not sure so in here i have ginger and i'm gonna just i did go ahead and scrub my ginger but i'm just ah. <laughs> I probably should have done this before, but I'll just go ahead and make some ginger because we know maybe that is too loud. So, but we know, um, hopefully we can take the sound off of this, but we know back home we use, um, ginger in our sorrow. so in here and i'm thinking maybe what we'll do we'll just draw the sorrel as we say back home we draw it so what we probably do is just use the wine to do this so in here i'm gonna pour some red label wine i'm gonna pour all of that and it says red label wine but this is not the red wine that i'm used to back home this don't really feel like the, um so i'll pour that in here and what i'm planning to do is to use this for the blending of the fruit so i will go ahead and do this and see how it turns out and i'll come back tomorrow i'll do this overnight and i'll come back tomorrow to show you how this turn out if it turns out okay all right so I'm about to set this on the stove. So I'm going to set that on the stove and I'm going to leave it there for maybe until it stops boiling and then I'll turn it off and leave it overnight to, to soak. Because we don't normally use water in our fruit cake. So inside so just have the wine and the ginger in here and the sorrel wine and ginger. So let's see how this turn out. I might need to pour some more wine in there. I have some more wine. I brought the place here. Let me see. All right, but this is already it smells like rum anyways, but we will see how this turn out when it gets to steaming. Tomorrow we're only doing one cake, so I don't need a whole bunch of this because I don't know how it's going to turn out. All right, so take care and I'll see you on the other side okay guys so i realized i didn't have enough wine in it so i just rushed out and got me it's called taylor port this one is a taylor port wine so i'm just gonna pour some in there i didn't want to use too much wine because i don't want to make too much cake but i realized maybe i didn't have enough in here and it's probably gonna evaporate some so hence i'm pouring some more wine in there and let's see how that is gonna turn out so like i said i'll have this um let me see okay i'll have this okay so should have enough in it should have enough to give the color when we're ready tomorrow to bake the cake oh lord i probably gotta pour some more in let's see I 
I, I need to get the ginger down in the bottom into the wine because I needed to have the ginger flavor as well. I probably needed a bigger pot and <laughs> I probably needed one of those pot we have in Jamaica. See, so maybe this is gonna be like a sorrel wine. See, it's red. So it's probably gonna be like a sorrel wine. And like I said, I don't know if they put coloring on these sorrel because I bought the dry one. So I'll just get the ginger down in there. And these ginger in America, not you know, they're not so spicy like the Jamaican ginger. So I'll just get some of that ginger into the, the thing. So tomorrow I'll strain this off and see. So it's actually getting the color. The thing is, I don't know if it has the taste, but we'll, we'll find out tomorrow. We'll find out. So there we go. So tomorrow I'll strain this off and then I'll use it to blend the fruits that I'm going to use. I don't know if I like this dry sorrel, but guess what? This is what I have here. If I was in Jamaica, I could have gotten the, the green one. But for now, this is what I got. You see? It already has that color. I know this is wine and rum. It's white. There's white rum in it. And I got the red label wine and then I got some port wine. So this is actually going to be like a sorrel wine. And I will strain this off tomorrow and then use that for the blending of the, of the foods. So we just need to let that steam up for a little bit. See what happens. Alrighty. So I'll be back. Good morning, good morning, and welcome again to CJ's Kitchen. It's a snowy day, you all. It starts to snow already. But um, I told you I wanted to make a um, sorrel cake that I've never made before. And I actually showed in a part of the, the, um, part of the video what I decided to do, how I thought, or how I was thinking um, to make the sorrel cake. And so I had put to, um, to draw or to steam the sorrel in white rum and wine. And so I did that last night and um, I'm about to demonstrate. Here I have already started, I put flour in. I'm just gonna do a one pound mix because it's just a tester and I'm not sure how it's done. So in here, I have a pound of flour. I already went ahead and put a tablespoon of baking, baking powder in there. I put a half a tablespoon of cinnamon powder. I, want, I was gonna go do um, the, the prep before coming on video to make it shorter video, but I decided, because I'm just gonna do the same thing I would do with my food cake I'm just not adding any brown into it. And for the wine, it will be actually sorrel wine. But that was the thought I have of probably how to do it. So I just put a uh, half a tablespoon of nutmeg in there. And this is, um, I'm gonna do a half a tablespoon of mixed spice as well. All right, sorry. That one's gone. So we put that over here in just a second. I'll get some salt. Here we have salt. We never want to leave our salt because salt helps to bring the flavor up of um, the sugar in your baking. Anything you're baking, you need salt. So I'll just do a half a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. Here we got those over here. And so this one we're gonna sift in here. I wanted to make the video a little shorter, but in case you all didn't know how to do the food cake, I'm like, you know what? Let me just um, go ahead and do this demonstration as well. So then we're sifting in our dry ingredients. 
and we normally sip so it actually makes the flour a little lighter and in case there's any little bits and pieces in your spices takes that out so you don't wanna especially if you don't like to bite on those okay so then i'm gonna get my bowl i'm not using a big mixer today because i'm only doing a small mix so here i'm gonna add a pound of butter Um, this one is imperial imperial butter or imperial margarine I'm not even sure but <laughs> it's either butter or margarine so you can use either or so let's see and I hope you're all you're you are hearing me I'm actually using my um ear pods I got these ear pods you all for my Christmas gift. They are so clear. It's iPhone ear pads. And I am hearing so well in them and I hope you are hearing me. Okay, so that's a pound of butter. And I'm also gonna use a pound of sugar. I normally do like big mixes. So I'm used to doing stuff in bulk. But this morning I'm doing one pound mixes okay and i hope you are seeing what i'm doing so this is a pound of sugar so this one um for my one pound mix i have a pound of flour pound of sugar pound of butter and i use one dozen eggs okay so we pour that in I just finished and I realized I'm a little bit too close um, so I'm gonna pull myself away a little bit that's my eggs and I'm gonna put stuff over here I realized you weren't able to see to see me well in um in the video I have my lemon here and I write those right there and I'll take my stuff in put these away okay so in here like i showed you before it's the butter and the sugar now i'm gonna cream my butter and my sugar together i normally do my eggs separate especially when i'm doing a big batch of cake but today i think i'm gonna add my eggs one at a time to my butter and sugar um, I normally do it separate because the eggs and the lemon juice tend to get a little firmer when I'm doing my, my stuff. Okay, but today, being that today is kind of a small batch day, I'll go ahead and I'll do my eggs. And I have, these are large eggs. I have a dozen eggs. And I'm going to use maybe eight. I won't use the whole dozen because these are large eggs. And I normally would break my eggs into, I'll break my eggs into something instead of putting my eggs all at once in the, in the mix, I break them one at a time. There we go. I'm just gonna use a hand. I'm gonna start slow.
Okay, so now that we've got that mixed in, we're gonna add two eggs at a time. So that was two eggs, and I'll just break two more. And I break them in this container in case there is a um, bad egg in there, I'll be able to pour it out and not pour it into my mix, right? Or in case I get some eggshells in, okay and i'll break two more so like i said i'm only gonna use eight eggs. i should have broke this one I'm only going to use eight eggs. So that's two. Because these are big eggs, y'all. And once you have big eggs, you don't have to use a whole dozen. And I mean, it's a smaller mix. So you can use eight instead of a whole dozen. When I'm doing my bigger mixing, Especially if the eggs are small, like I want to use. And I hope you can all hear me. I am using my earphones, but my headphones. But Okay, so that was my last two eggs. That was my last two eggs, and then now I'm gonna add my lemon juice in this one. And I don't have a, a lemon, a lime juice, a lime. And I've removed the zest because I want to use the zest as well. And as you all know, the lime helps to take away the taste of the raw egg or that smell, that raw you know smell that eggy smell so I'll put this in here and i'm using two juice of lemon two lime juice so i'm just using two lime and it won't hurt it's like it's just two so you don't have to worry about it's gonna be too limey or whatever it tastes actually tastes good in your cake okay so I'll also um, go ahead and, okay, I'll pour this in here. So that's my last two eggs. And I'll actually scoop down the batter off the side. After, I'll scoop that in. Okay, so there we go. Let me just rest this right here. Alrighty, so now we finished. Um, now we finished mixing the butter and the sugar together, and we've had we have our. Okay, I'll put this over here. I'm gonna need this. So I'll just leave that right there. I'll put this over here. Um, we have the fruit. So we have our flour mix right there. We put this here so now this is the interesting part of the day something i wanted to do let me see okay oh wow all righty i think i did a lot of um 
this sarah because i really don't know how to do sarah so when i bought them yesterday i actually used a lot of it and i realized it was too much so ooh, that smells strong okay so i'm gonna pour i thought i was making a sour wine and that's what i i plan to do so i'm gonna try to pour the wine off the sour and for this sour oh that is so red remember oh that's heavy i think what i'm gonna do with this sour as well i'm gonna preserve it I'm going to pour more rum and wine over it and let it stay until I'm ready again. Oh my God, that is so rich. Until I'm ready again. If it turns out, <laughs> if it turns out good, because like we talked last night, you all that I have no idea how to make a sour mix. So in this, I actually have white rum. I have some red label wine and I have some um, Taylor port wine, ginger, and I did put some pimento seed in it because I remember back home when you do sorrel, they normally had pimento seed and white rice to cure it. Um, I couldn't put white rice in it because it would have been cooked. It would have cooked. So, but some of this, because it was so much and it was actually the dried, the dried, um, Sorrow. So I'm gonna pray some of that, right? And so this will be this will actually be the wine, the um sorrel wine. I'm afraid to taste that because that's just rum and um, rum and oh god, it's so red that it's it splashes and it gets onto stuff and it <laughs> It just takes that color. All right, so let me see. I guess I'll get some of my sour over here. I'll take some of the cook one because I did cook it. Okay, so I won't do a lot because I'm not sure. Or should I? I don't know. But like I said, this is an experiment, you all, because you all been asking me how do I make a sour cake, how to make a sour cake, and I have no idea, but I decided to try an experiment on here. So, there we go. And now we're gonna pour back some of this wine in here. Oh my God, that is so rich. All right, let's see. Normally I use my Ninja Blender, but this morning, I'm not doing that on. Um, I'm just gonna go for this one right here. That is much better. All right, so to this, I'm gonna now have some fruits. Okay, so I have fruit soaking and I took some out. And I'm gonna have some of my fruits to this. Cause it's basically still fruit cake, isn't it? So I'm just gonna have some fruits to this. Um, Maybe that's a pound and a half of fruit. See how this works. And then I'm also gonna add my um my lemon zest, my lime zest to that as well. I'm also gonna pour a little more wine in this. Okay, so. Like I said, 
this is just a one palm mix so we don't want to go overboard and do too much stuff because it's just a one palm mix okay all right so let's see so we do chop <laughs> a blender we don't want to blend for too long because we don't want to burn our blender right and i don't really want to puree the fruit either i want to have um little bits in it because if you puree your fruit too much you tend to get um your cake will get really puddly okay that seems good oh my goodness okay i don't know if you can see that but that is the texture and the color is so rich All right, so we'll put this right here for a second and we will remove some stuff we need to do i can't get over how good this thing look all right so in this we'll do our last last mix so everything combines We're done with. We just sit into the kitchen sink. Oh wow, I'm so sorry. I realized that the video is so low. So guess what? I'm gonna remove the mask. I think the mask had made my voice so muffled. So here I have the the batter from the eggs and the sugar and the butter. In this, all right. Now we're going to add our flour to the mix, our dry ingredients. All right, I still have some of that sorrel wine. I'm going to call that the sorrel wine. So here I have my dried mix. And in this we have um, its flour and all my spices. Like I had my um, baking powder. So one pound of flour, a tablespoon of baking powder, a half a tablespoon of cinnamon, nutmeg, and mixed spice. And to my ingredients, I'm just going to add a little at a time. And then I'll fold, cut and fold into that. And you all know we don't use a mixer to do our fruit cake when we are doing fruit cake. I know persons might wonder why don't we pour or some persons might pour their fruits in it before the flour is mixed out. I feel and I find that if you do that, it's harder to mix the flour out because the dry flour then attaches itself to the the dry flour attaches itself to the um stuff and then don't get mixed out properly also to this i normally don't measure but um for your benefit and um, because i want to show you i measure i'll probably do two tablespoons one two three and that's vanilla i normally kind of go with my gut feeling when i'm doing these things 
I feel so bad, you all, that the first part of my video, the voice is so low. Okay, and this is cinnamon spice. I'm sorry, almond spice. And so I had two of those to that. All right, so then I'll go ahead again. And move that all the way again. And I'll cut and fold. So as we go, it gets a little thicker. But then... Still cut and fold into this. What we could probably do is add a little of the wine to it. But you want to cut and fold into that. And it gets hard to go on the arms. Wow, it gets hard on the arms. <laughs> but we cut and fold, and that's what we used to spoon and I love this wooden spoon I've been trying to get another one I don't even remember where I got this one because I've had it for a long time but this particular wooden spoon is really strong for our fruit in, okay? This is the fruit we had parade, okay? And we, oh God, we can't have that splashing all over the place because it is so like bright red. I said you all I never made a sorrow cake before this is the first so um, we're, I'm just trying <laughs> so, um, and if you want to have anything else like if you see you know like something else you probably thought or thinking of having like I said oh I made this sorrow I put wine and rum in it and I did it overnight i've um, steamed it and i left it overnight i said i've never made this before so it's a trial and you will see this video if it turns out well if it did not turn out well you won't see this video <laughs> just gotta mix and watch your texture and see when you get to the texture that you like that consistency then you will know so in this we won't put any burnt sugar or browning because we want to keep it this color I don't know what color it's gonna turn out when it's baked but right now it's pink. <laughs> kind of has a pretty pink color. My oven's been um, pre-eaten, so I want to slow bake this. So I'll probably do this at 250 for maybe an hour and a half into two hours, depending. You know, so we'll see how that turns out. So it's a pink 
cake for you. Okay, so this pan, I'm gonna use it. This is very thin, but I'm gonna use this because I'm gonna use this one so I can share with friends and family. And this one, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get all three out of it, but for this one, in case somebody wants to order, <laughs> Cause I do bake and 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 um, take orders, right? I do do that. So in case it turns out well, you know. Let's see. I'm not really a lover of sorrow. I don't even quite remember um, the taste of sorrow, right? Cause I know I'm not a lover of the thing, but I know I know the difference between a fruit cake, a real regular fruit cake, and a sour cake. All right, so we just I just threw this on the side. what seems like you're only okay so for you to see I'll come back over here now pour that in I'm not sure I tend to have a little butter and stuff at the bottom I just have to give me a second I just have to mix that in and don't be weird out about that when you have a little mixture left over and you see maybe some butter and sugar in the bottom or something. Yeah, just go ahead and mix it right in. Let's see how that one is. And then, and we're not trying to waste our mix as Especially if it tastes like really good. We don't want to waste that. So we want to get that off the spoon. And get that off the spoon. We put our spoon in the kitchen. And then here we go. We get the rest of that. And like I said, I got water in my um I got water in my oven and the water is for steaming. I hope this consistency is is okay. Um, I'm not so able to read it as well as I would read my food cake and no. So I'm not sure if it's the sorrow that is. All right, so we know this one is gonna be thin because the pan is but we still can't put too much in the pan all right and we got one right here and we go ahead and we put this in the oven i hope you can see what that looks like oh my goodness like i said it's pretty pink so we'll see we'll see how those turn out and i think i want to keep them in the middle of my oven see we will find out there's no i did not put any food coloring in it and like i said i bought the dried the dried sorrow and i boiled it overnight and left it to um ferment and so i got a sorrel wine from it this i'm gonna pour over and pour some more wine over the sorrel that i have and i'll just leave it in the wine just like how we'd leave our fruits to soak and I'll leave it and see how that turn out. So the next time I'm making a sorrel cake, 
I don't have to worry about getting some sorrel wine. I think once I put this together, it will stay there and ferment as a sorrel wine, right? And then we will still have the bits and pieces to blend and use in our cake. So I'll let you know how that turned out and thanks for watching again. Okay guys, so listen, the moment is here. Welcome back to CJ's Kitchen. And you know, I'll be talking about making a sorrel cake and you've watched the video where I've gone from making the sorrel wine to how oh, I try to do this cake. So this one is ready. The other one is still in the oven because I did a slow bake and I've been actually I've been actually planning to see if I can cool it down. I was trying to open one of these windows, you all, so some cold here could come in, but I couldn't get it. So this is what it is. So this is, let's see. Uh, okay, it cuts well. And do you know if the cake is still warm, you don't get that clean cut like when it's cool right and the color is still good it's still pink you all it's still a pink cake uh, oh i smell the rum in it mm, smells good i'm not a lover of sorrow i tell you but okay this is a bit of it let's see we eat a hot cake well, let's see Hmm. I'm not sure if that's the sorry taste. I don't even remember what sorry tastes like. I'm not I'm sorry in a while. But you know what I'm gonna do? Oh the fruit is in there. I taste the fruit. Mm because I didn't puree it, right? But it has a tangy, it tastes tangy, but I'll give it to somebody to test it because honestly, I'm not sure what it's supposed to taste like. It tastes good, it tastes like cake, just a little more tangy. Mm. But so far it turned out good. The texture is okay. Texture is okay, but I'm not sure you are. I'll have someone to taste it and see if I can get a review. Because like I said, I'm not a sorry person. So I don't know. I know it tastes good. Maybe when my daughter is up. Oh, she does not eat fruitcake. Anything with fruits in it, she's not going to eat. Mm. Tastes good. Tastes good, you all. So this might be some... A way to do it I uh, see maybe later on probably could have something else or if you're doing it you probably could have something else to it maybe some um, applesauce I was thinking I probably should have added some applesauce mm. but it stays good it just needs to cool down you are and like I said it's still hot but it cuts well and it comes out well so 